Hi guys, welcome to the Lazy Filmmaker Podcast. This is my first video in 2024. And in this video, I'll be breaking down this movie that I think pushed the boundaries when it comes to live action and animated characters in a movie. And it's titled Mikolo. I think this is a really, really good film to have been released during the festive season because lots of young ones were able to have a good time watching this movie. The actors were exceptional, the directing was great, but there are a couple of things that I just couldn't let go as a technical guy and as a cinematographer. So in this video, I'll be talking about some of those things that I felt could have taken this film from this present level to the next level. So let's go. So the first thing I'll be talking about is this scene in the car and um, I'll just be looking at the light continuity. So for me, there's something that when it comes to car scenes, it's very tricky. Whenever I see um, a car scene and I see that people are lit, obviously. I mean, of course you have to light people inside a car. It's very essential so you can see their faces and their expressions. But if you look at this, um, you can easily see where the light is coming from. You can see the side of her face. Um, the light is really, really, really um, showing itself. That's how I can explain it. So um, this could have been avoided if, you know, there was like a, let's say, they diffused the light a bit better and they probably like softened the light and, you know, maybe like double diffusion, I think. You know, yeah, that would have worked well. So you're sending light through one diffusion and it's sending to the second diffusion. That would have made this a bit lighter and you probably not notice where the light is coming from. Also, if you look at the background, um, if you look at the girls, the girl in the background and you look at the child, you can obviously see that they are very, very bright, which is a bit, you know, it just really looks strange that they are very lit. But if you look at their background like here, let me show you. So let's say this is the lighting for the kids. So the kids are lit this way. Um, they're very bright. Then when you look at this side, this side is a bit darker than this. So it's very directional and that's the challenge. So when you light um, people, you want to make sure that the source of light is not very obvious. Um, if it does, if it looks obvious, then it starts to distract people like me because when I watch stuff like this, um, my eyes just takes me away from the reality or uh, takes me away from the sense of disbelief, which is what movies are supposed to be. It's supposed to make you feel like this is not really happening. But seeing this, I can obviously see that it was lit. And is that something to worry about for most people? No, um, but in an industry where we are striving to be better, I think um, ideally I would have done this a bit, taking the stop down a bit, trying to make sure that this doesn't look this hot because then you can see that this side of her face is very bright and this side of her face is darker, um, which is fine in terms of trying to get the contrast ratio of the faces but maybe just a stop down would have really helped this scene to look better and this is where you would notice the disparity in the scene so um when you look at this this is the close-up of the mom and then you jump to the girl at the back so pay attention to the light on her face so there's no light here the face is evenly lit at this point the light is coming from the right side of the scene right the light is coming from this right side of the scene and if you jump back to let's jump back to the scene before now then the light direction has changed now the light is coming from the left so light continuity is very strange if this was filmed ideally in a real sense the sun is on this side of you know um, of camera there's no way that you would film and before you know it when you jump from here to the girl's shot then you now see that the sun has started coming from here, which is just quite strange. It's not very convincing. So that is something to pay attention to when filming, especially like car scenes. I'm sure this was shot over and over. And also this probably happened because the car had to like keep driving round and round just so you can get your coverage. It's understandable. Um, just something that for me as a filmmaker and for some people that have trained eyes also, that jumps out. So this is another interesting scene in the movie that really um, paints the importance of, you know, light continuity and light intensity for me. So if you look at this scene, these guys are in a tricycle, it's called Kekena Pepe, Nigeria. That's where I'm from. You would see the light on the face of this character. You see the light on this face. What that means is there's a source of light here. I'm sure there's like a tube light here that is giving them, you know, 
this light that is bouncing on their face is that okay yes that's fine um there's also probably another light here hidden behind this place that's lighting this guy's face that makes a lot of sense because yeah you need to at least see the character's faces um if i was also doing this i would probably take it down two stops or a stop just so it's not very obvious because if you can look at it this is very bright as compared to like let's say the other part of the body we like down here so it shows that the light is coming from the top and it's very close to the light because the light was probably hidden um somewhere here now let's jump into just a few shots after that and that's where you see the light continuity issue that comes up so now when you come here which is still the same scene you will notice something that is very jarring and this was very um i felt like this could have been fixed in post but they lost light here and the show must go on you know and immediately you can see that they brought in some lights they probably brought in um let's say a four by or a six by and putting some this is me putting like a very ridiculous shot of a light stand this is the light stand let's say under light was here light stand and they push this into um the diffuser or uh, into like the you know i don't know if it's a muslin i'm not very sure what diffusing material they used but this is how i imagine that they did this so they brought in lights now to like put light on their faces now the challenge with that is the entire shot, the background of the shot is dark. So here it's dark as compared to the shot before now, when you come here, see, the levels here are way different. The levels here are way different. This entire shot is brighter. And then when you come to this shot, which is here, then everything becomes, you know, dark. And then the light intensity was a bit different. If you look at the girl's face, if you look at the girl's face here and uh, the intensity of the light there compared to when you come here it's just different it's just really different the light intensity is like day and night so these are the things that for me could have been balanced a bit and i'm speaking about these things not because they affect the story it doesn't affect the story um the average person would enjoy this movie how would i have solved this in post uh, i'll give this a very quick um attempt i'm using final cut now usually i'll do this in davinci and just try to raise the light a bit just to see if it can match and that's like trying to increase the overall exposure of the shot and then when you jump from here to here it feels a bit more natural this is this and that so just a little bit of tweak of brightness would have just helped the shot and match it a bit better than the way it was before see this is way better than from here to there so the exposure dropped it could have been compensated maybe they didn't want to like increase um you know the maybe like open up the iso in in camera so that you don't introduce noise that's a smart idea but in post that could have been easily fixed let's move to the next one um this is an interesting concept because i've seen this a lot and i've seen people do it very well so this is a technique called day for night and what that means is you basically film your scene during the day and then in the post you try to introduce some darkness and you introduce some colors to make it look like night um why do you do this it just it's easier it's cheaper it's technically like it just saves you a lot of stress because if you were going to light this scene on a normal day you would have had to like light the entire forest which is probably going to be very impossible even for big budget productions it's tough it's crazy to want to do that so this scene was shot during the day obviously and apologies for the bad quality this is not how the film looks the film looks way better than this i mean in terms of you know the sharpness um maybe the light is similar very similar so i'm not really i'm not bothered about the sharpness of the film i'm not breaking that down all right so this is the last scene that i'll be talking about and this scene is where the this female the girl character is um in the sky with mikolo and mikolo is making this child fly and it's quite interesting this was our first time you know up in the sky of course like imagine a child waking up and she's in the sky and this bird this strange bird is just flying up and she's scared i felt like that was interpreted well the only thing that didn't make it work for me was the I just felt like the, it wasn't very believable. Um, if you've seen Harry Potter, even from the first Harry Potter, when Harry jumps on the broom and flies, 
you can see that the wind element, everything is there. So I feel this scene, I can imagine that she's on a bench. She's on a bench on a green screen and then, uh, you know, she's just sat on it and to help her interact with the, you know, invisible because they didn't put the character, they put the character in post. So that was impressive, to be honest, the, the, the girl actor was, I mean, kudos to her for like pulling this through. Um, however, the couple of things would have um, helped the effects to look better and one of them would have been maybe to put like a fan somewhere somewhere here to blow her <laughs> so if you put a fan and you have her like hair or something blowing on her face and her clothes blowing that would have really helped because you can't be up there and not have wind blowing over your face it's like skydiving and there's nothing blowing you it's not possible so i just felt like that was a bit of a okay she's nowhere she's in the studio it doesn't look like she's flying but also they could have put the same fan again put the fan here and let's say this is an ox fan and let the fan blow. I'm very terrible at drawing, but that's what I'm trying to explain. Like, imagine the fan blowing her face and her hair is flying up and down and Mikolo's hair is flying. That would have really made us feel like, and would have even made me, the child in me feel like, that would be nice to fly up there, you know, you know, sat on the bird. Uh, but that did not happen. So it just kind of made it look, it just disconnected it in a way. Um, for children, most of them would not really know the difference. So that's okay. The only thing is, Kids nowadays are very smart. They're like, nah, mom, she's not flying. Yeah, because they've seen a lot of behind the scenes. And that's why movies nowadays take the extra effort to make sure that things look closer to reality. And not even nowadays. Harry Potter, the first one was shot years ago and they used these principles. So I felt that could have been better and that could have helped the cinematography also. So if you enjoy videos like this where I talk about lighting, cameras, cinematography, color, then subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up or share it with somebody and let me know in the comment section what do you think about this movie Mikolo uh, I personally think that it's a great attempt however there are pitfalls on every movie every movie has something that could be done better and that's why I've pointed this out so that's it till next time to the next video where I come and talk about another one please subscribe to my channel show me some love show the filmmaker some love show the actor some love and I'll see you in the next one cheers